This is from the Bleacher Report. Redrafting the 2018 NFL Draft. With the number one pick, they had the Browns uh, taking Josh Allen instead of Baker Mayfield. Number two pick to the Giants, they have Lamar Jackson instead of Saquon Barkley. Uh, they have the Jets going to Ron Payne instead of quarterback Sam Darnold with the third pick. For the fourth pick, uh, they have the Browns going Jair Alexander instead of Denzel Ward. And so I, I guess to me that fourth pick is kind of a, a wash where they have uh, the Browns picked Ward. They haven't taken Jair Alexander. Um, they have Ward going ninth overall to the 49ers. They have the Commanders taking uh, Wyatt Teller 13th overall. The Seahawks picking Nick Chubb 18th overall. Uh, Baker Mayfield was not picked in the um, in the first round, so it's kind of interesting. You know, the Browns uh, end up with you know, five got four guys that would have gone in the first round. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Obviously, Josh Allen would be the pick instead of Mayfield, and you know, John Dorsey missed on that one. Um, and who knows how that would have changed the franchise, right? I mean, it's a yep. it's huge when you get those number one picks. You draft the wrong guy at the position. Uh, it affects you. The Browns would not have had to go after Deshaun Watson. The cap would be in a different spot. Like, there's so many repercussions. Um, but I think the rest of it's really interesting. Um, you know, Alexander's probably had a better career than Ward to this point. But if Ward, you know, plays at a high level the next two years, I think you could redraft it and Ward would deserve to be at number four. So, you know, I, I don't think four's a bad spot for Ward, especially if he'd go nine in the redraft. What I find interesting is, it, that, it seems high for Teller. I, I mean, I know Teller's been good, and he's been to a Pro Bowl or two. Um, it seems high for a guard. And, you know, I, I know running back is devalued, and I feel that way, and I would not draft one high. You know, I was stunned when the Lions took their guy high and the Falcons took their guy high this year. Um, but knowing what we know about Nick Chubb, I think I would take him ahead of Wyatt Teller. I would agree. I, I, you know, again, Nick Chubb, you can you can say the the same conversation that we had about Joel Batonio. Now, Nick Chubb is a few years behind, but if he continues to rack up Pro Bowls and gain 1,200, 1,500, 18 yards, another three, four seasons, you're gonna have that same conversation about him in the gold jacket. Yeah, you know, it felt premature. I had this discussion with somebody last year, and it felt premature to me, but in that ESPN um, article we referenced earlier, the Bill Barnoir one, um, some of the Chubb, like, analytical numbers, you know, the secondary stats are incredible. And he's so far in front of everyone in the league. And then if you take him and Derrick Henry, there's, you know, then there's a huge, huge drop-off to the rest of the running backs. So, um, and, and I think there's a reference to the Hall of Fame in there. So, yeah, I, I, he's... You know, he's a couple years away at the same level he's been the last three or four years from being a legitimate Hall of Fame candidate. And, you know, guard guard's an important position, but it's not left tackle, right? It's neat, not defensive end. It's not receiver. It's not corner. So if you're going to take somebody ahead of Nick Chubb, I don't think I'd take a guard. Yeah, no offense I, to Joe Batonio or Wyatt, Wyatt Teller. Teller. No, I, I agree with you. I, I get to – and when you look at it, guards usually – End of the first round, not middle of the first round. 